The following presentation was recorded live at Color Lab's 20th Annual Convention. This is tape number three, Developing Your Creative Abilities. Also, if you do not have a handout, um, let me know and we'll get one around to you. Good morning and welcome to the session on developing or nurturing your creative abilities. My name is Jim Wheeler. I am a member of Color Lab, but in one of my other lives, I'm also a workshop seminar leader in many different areas. Uh, presently finishing up with a master's degree from Buffalo State College in creative studies and innovation. So nurturing your creative ability is something that's very close to me. And those of you that have gone through the thesis preparation know exactly how close that thing can be. On a scale of zero to ten, how creative are you? If a rock had a creative ability of zero, and Einstein had the creative ability of ten, where are you? Five? That's a good place to start, right? Right in the middle. We say, whoa, wait a minute. No, I'm more like uh, two. Or, hey, you know, I'm up there with Einstein. Who else could we put up with uh, ten? Anybody? Who is creative? Who do you think is creative that we could put up on the ten scale? Who's that? Okay. Who else? Bill Cosby. Is something different? Bill Gates. Ah, yeah, Microsoft. Who? Oh, any songwriter. Okay. Norman Vincent Peale. Boy, we got some good answers here for creative people. Leonardo da Vinci. Henry Ford. Mary Allison. <laughs> Barry Clasper. If you look at the people that are considered to be highly creative or someplace near the 10 scale, what we find are people that are no different than you and I, or if you look at the artists, the painters of the Renaissance era and before, if they were to be alive today, they would probably be clinically and legally declared insane. We think of creative people as being the weirdos. Or, if you're over 50, they call us eccentrics. The creative people were creative in one area. We didn't hear anybody about creative choreographers and square dancing. Mm, some are very creative. We all have different talents that we can use, and we can be creative, and we end up being creative in those talents. And the question becomes not, how creative are you, but rather, in what ways are you creative? We know that intelligence is no longer one number to be measured. We know that intelligence is not something that we can say, ooh, I got an IQ of 156, you got an IQ of 92. In the last 10, 15 years, we've learned about multiple intelligence or the structure of intellect. Some of you may be familiar with that. And we find out that we are all different. We look at that thing we call intelligence and we have identified somewhere between 150 and 180 different kinds of intelligence or components of intelligence. We haven't got names for them all yet, but we know they exist. And in our humane society, we don't cut apart the brain and start picking things out with tweezers and say, ooh, this nerve cell belongs to creativity. This nerve cell belongs to 
artistic ability, but rather we look at the product that people produce. And when you look at your bigger world outside the square dance field, there are things that you are very good at. And things that you have worked hard at to produce some kind of a good product. At least good for you, or in the eyes of the beholder. Okay. Again, if you do not have a handout, make sure you get one, because I'd like you to eat. we're going to be using them during the session. One of the things about the handouts, they're not just pretty pictures. They're not just something you take and you put in the folder and when you get home, if you're like I am, here's a folder that says Collar Lab 93 and it sits in that bottom drawer along with all the other Collar Lab folders and once in a while I might take it out and say, oh, I remember something that I wanted to remember and we forget what it is that we wanted or where it is. What I'd like you to do with these handouts is write all over those suckers. It's yours. It's not a library book. So when you get an idea, write it down. Write it down. We know a lot of things about the brain. A lot of things we don't know, but we do know some things. If you are, int if you are not interested in this subject, your attention span is going to be somewhere between 12 and 15 seconds on the average. That's seconds. Didn't say it wrong. And your mind goes someplace else. Darts off in another direction. If you are interested in a subject, 12 to 15 minutes. That means if we're here for an hour and 15 minutes, your mind's going to wander at least five times. And I'll bet you all the money in my pocket, my wife's got it, that your mind has wandered at least once, if not three times, in the last ten minutes. You think about other things. We are, our, our five senses are constantly being bombarded for attention. And it makes us think about something else. In stating my credentials, you might think about yours. Or someone else's. So your mind goes off that way. Now, let's bring that back. Let's use that to benefit us. So on your handout, if you have an idea or you think about something else, it's okay to write it down. You can write down your out thoughts as well as your in thoughts. In thoughts are those things that are content germane. Things we're talking about. We're talking about nurturing creative abilities. Okay, so on the left side of my handout, I'm going to write down everything I need to know about nurturing my creative ability. On the other side of my handout or over in the right hand column, I'm going to write down those things that my out thoughts bring to my conscious. Such things as don't forget to wear my badge to the meals. Such things as got to order tapes. Such things as oh my gosh I left my clothes at the cleaners I got to pick them up first thing when I get home. They have nothing to do with this session. But they have things to do with you. They're important to you. We recognize those. So anytime you're sitting in a session, anytime you're sitting in a staff meeting, any place, and those out thoughts keep bombarding you, write them down. It's perfectly okay. It's natural. And how many of you get ideas about things you can do back home? How many here for the first time? Oh boy. When you get back home, you're going to have a suitcase full of ideas. If you could only remember them. Or find them. When do you do your best thinking? When do you get your best ideas? In the shower. When you're driving to work. Just before you fall asleep. Just before you get out of bed? In the morning or the afternoon? Okay. <laughs> At strange times. Do you write down those ideas? Some, <laughs> not for what? Not in the shower. Now, that's kind of difficult. Although I do know folks that have grease pencils and they write on the glass wall of their shower stall. He's really eccentric. My wife hasn't quite let me do that. But we're getting close. How about when you're driving down the road? You write those down? We try to. Yes. The, 
the young lady says, take a tape recorder with you in the car. She, she must be peeking up here. What we need, folks, is for everyone to capture those ideas that we have at those times when we don't normally have a piece of paper in front of us. I can remember, oh, many, many years ago, waking up in the middle of the night and dreaming of some choreographic figure. And I said, wait a minute, i got to do something about this. So I got a steno pad, and I put it next to the nightstand, and I'd wake up, and I'd have weird combinations of just before I fell asleep. I'd write them down. I couldn't read them in the morning. However, with a little mini cassette recorder, twenty nine ninety five, I don't sell them. Okay. All it takes is this little baby sitting on the seat of the car or someplace convenient when you're driving to work, when you're driving to a dance. And you just push the record button and record your ideas in their raw form. And we'll talk more about why in their raw form a little later on. So this is one component. There's a gentleman over there that's got there. Okay, this is one form of an idea system. Capture your ideas when they are fresh. The other thing is some kind of written notebook. Not just a to-do list, although my daytimer, that's a brand name, but that's what I use. There's the Franklin system, and there's a day runner, and there's all kinds of them. I see folks pulling them out now. Oh, you got credit cards in yours. Can I borrow yours for a while? <laughs> but in here is my calendar. But in here, if I, don't, if I can do it without dropping it, are all kinds of other little books. And another one in the back. And you'll see it's also loaded with post-its. Because that's the third part of my idea system. Post-its. I have post-its on the wall in my office at home. I have post-its in the wall in my office at work. I have post-its. I think I've got them in here too, don't I? Yeah, I even got a little few post-its in my pocket of my jacket. I always have something to capture my ideas. They may not have any application at the moment. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. And every once in a while, I go through my notebooks and I take a look at some of those ideas and say, hey, there's a project I really wanted to get started on. How come I haven't done anything about it? Other things get in the way. Okay. Just get some ideas for choreography. Yeah, I got a file, finally. It took me a long time because they were scattered all over the house. I now have a file, one of those uh, expansion type things, and I've got a whole bunch of pieces of paper in there. And when I wake up and my, I feel my brain is dead, and I've got to get ready for a dance, I might go into that file and pull out those pieces of paper and say, oh, there's a neat combination. I haven't used that in a long time. Or I haven't used that one at all. Or that one needs developing. So I have my ideas captured. Not all of them, but a heck of a lot more than I used to have before I started an idea system. I still have a lot of little pieces of paper floating around on top of my dresser. And oh, in my, probably in my pocket. No, I don't have any notes in my pocket yet today. It's too early. But then at least I have them all con concentrated, focused in the same spot. So get yourself some kind of an idea system. Let's play a little game. Give you a chance to use your imagination. And all I want you to do is sit back. Relax, make yourself comfortable, and play along. If you are comfortable with your eyes closed, close your eyes. And folks on the tape at home, you can play along with us too. It doesn't take any partners. Are you relaxed? You ready? It's okay to nod your head. Yeah, just so long as it goes both directions. Let's pretend there's a dish of ice cream sitting right in front of you. Just a small dish, small scoop. See it? Nod your head if you do. Thank you. What flavor is it? Don't answer. Put a spoon next to the dish. Now pick up the spoon 
and take a bite of the ice cream. Eat all the ice cream. Go ahead. Mom and Dad aren't looking. No, neither are the kids. Look at the dish. You've just eaten it all. Is the ice cream gone? Maybe you wish you had more? Okay. Unlax. Did you see the ice cream? You sensed it at least. Some of you. How much, did anybody actually feel saliva in there? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Your favorite flavor. <laughs> Wasn't enough. Wanted more. Stomach's still gurgling, right? Yeah. That's the beginning of our creative abilities. Using our imagination. This was directed. Only you created the picture. One of the problems that we have when we communicate with one another is that we have a graphic in our mind. We want to put that graphic in somebody's head. And we communicate using some kind of a code called words. Okay. So if I were to ask you to describe the, the experience that you just had, we'd have a whole bunch of different experiences. Which means that yours is different than yours, which is different than yours, which is different than yours. And as we're, giving, as we're describing those experiences, we're beginning to express our creativity. Because it is different than somebody else's. Let's play another little game. Same kind, now that you've had a chance to get warmed up. Again, relax. Make yourself comfortable. Put a light bulb in your left hand. You do not have to do the physical activity, but rather just imagine. Hold it out in front of you. We're going to ask you to make that light bulb any color that you want. Is the light bulb on? If it isn't, turn it on. What color is your light bulb? Red? Green? Blue? Orange? Does it have a design? Or is it solid? Is it striped? Checked? Paisley? Is that light bulb warm or cold? Make the light bulb warm, not hot enough to burn, but just warm enough to make you feel good. Or if it's too hot, make it colder. Again, not icy cold, but rather just cold enough so you can hold it without, not, without wanting to drop it. Put the light bulb aside. Get another light bulb. Unscrew the bottom of that light bulb. And pour in some fly spray. Screw the bottom back on. Hold it out in front of you. And make it start shining. See the rays of light coming out of the light bulb? See the fly spray going with the rays of light, zapping the flies, and they fall dead as you wave that light bulb around the room. It's killing all the flies. They're not bothering your picnic anymore. See the picnic? See the food on the tablecloth at your picnic? Make the light bulb bigger. Real big. Whoops, whoops, not too big, not too big. But only as big as a television tube. The light bulb is a television tube. Blink your eyes. Change a program. 
Blink your eyes again. Look at another program. Blink your eyes and change the channel again. Blink your eyes and there's your favorite program. See the people in your favorite program? Do you see the scenes? Blink your eyes and turn the TV off. The TV that was your light bulb. Take another light bulb. Make it only half as big. Make it tinier. And it's a magic flashlight. Not only does it shine around you, but it shines little darts of light. And you can see things in the corner. Look over in that corner. See the spider? See the other bugs that are clinging to the spider's web? Take another light bulb so you have a light bulb in each hand. Hold your arms out straight. Pretend that your light bulbs are jet engines and you run down the street for takeoff. Running faster, faster, faster. Zoom! You're up in the air. Higher, higher, higher. You're circling over your house. Look down. Do you see anyone you know? Zoom over the town. Zoom, zoom over the stores you shop at. You decide that you want to leave these light bulbs. Open your parachute quick and parachute down to the ground. Landing in your favorite chair. Unlax. Open your eyes. Move around. Do something physical. Bring you back to life. <laughs> Folks, what you've just experienced is part of a page in your handout called SCAMPER. SCAMPER is an acronym that stands for Substitute, Combine, Adapt, Modify, Put to Other Uses, Eliminate, and Rearrange. How can we use our creative ability to improve the dance experience? Apply one of those words just as you did to the light bulb apply one of those words to your dance experience back home we're doing the same thing every year first week in June we have an anniversary party second week in September we have an open house for new dancers third week in September we cancel the classes because nobody showed up for the open house <laughs> then we have a Thanksgiving banquet then we have a Christmas party then we have a New Year's Eve party we see the same people coming into the same place all the time doing the same thing are they having a good time yeah they say so but supposing you take one of those activities Christmas party what could we substitute? And you begin to answer the questions that go along with substitute. Who else? What else? Other materials? Other power? Other place? Other music? Other people? And let your imagination run wild without judging your responses. How about a July 4th party the week before Christmas? Okay. How about people? How about having a Hawaiian luau? Or a mystery ride someplace to the mall so everybody can dance in the mall for your Christmas party. Or substitute someone else someplace else. Combine. How about having a how about a dance? How about a mix, an assortment, combine units, combine purposes, combine ideas? Those of you that have a Christmas party and a New Year's Eve party, and attendance is kind of lacking at both. But you see different people. Why don't you combine both of them? Have a New Year's Eve party on December 27th. Oh, never thought of that. Or combine with another club. So when you start thinking combine, you look at various elements and say, how am I going to support the dance experience? By making it something that people want. Adapt. What else is like this? Do we have other parties or too many of parties? What other ideas does it suggest? What could I copy? Whoa. 
And we're taught in school about plagiarism and you can't copy people. Well, one of the wonderful things about combining ideas is we end up with something that usually works out pretty good. Gee, I like that idea. You know, that made me think of... How many people were born in the Galt House? Nobody. How did you get here? Car? Plane? Trains go to Louisville? Okay. Do you think the jet airplane was the idea of one person? Well, the Wright brothers invented the airplane, but they didn't know about jet engines, and their little airplane didn't go very far, did it? Because of somebody else building on somebody else's idea, we now have the modern aircraft that flies coast to coast in about, what, four hours? Something like that? Or the SST that goes across the Atlantic in less than eight? We build on other people's ideas. I don't know if anybody was in the dancing picture when swing through was invented. But it came from an old dance that had an ocean wave in the middle. And folks didn't do much out of the ocean wave. They'd make an ocean wave and balance forward and back. And that was about it. And then all of a sudden, somebody said, what happens if we trade with the person next to us? Oh, wait a minute, there's four people in that line. Let's trade with the, peop the middle two people can trade. Then all of a sudden, we can change places. We build on an idea. And we end up with trade, circulates, and all kinds of swing-through families. Somebody building on somebody else's idea. So it's okay to copy. What has someone else done that I can do better? Modify. There's two things under modify, and they both begin with M. We often think one, but we forget the other. Magnify and minify. Notice what we did with the light bulb exercise. We did a couple of things. We magnified the light bulb to a TV set. We minified the light bulb to a fine point of light. And then we magnified it to a jet engine. We took two of them and made them, a jet, made them into a jet engine, an airplane. What can you do within your dance experience that needs magnification or minification? Put to other uses. Could it be used for something else? What new ways are there to use this idea? Can I do this somewhere else? Folks have been dancing in the summertime in that hot hall. Is there some place else we can go? Or rather than ask a question, is there, which can be answered yes or no, ask the question, where else can we go? Where else can we hold our dance? It might even be when. Because you might want to change the hours to a later time, to an earlier time. How many folks had their club dancing on Saturday mornings? I know the answer is going to be none. Have you considered that? Ask yourself why. Ask yourself why not. It might not be applicable. Now, one thing I hope you're doing as we're going through this, if you get ideas and say, ooh, that's a nice one, I think I'm going to use that, or that reminds me of, write them down. That's what the handouts are for, for you to write on. Okay. And we're looking at eliminate. What happens if I leave it out? Fewer parts, condensed, smaller, shorter. How can we make less become more? How can we, what can we do without? If you're planning a festival... Or a weekend. It just seems to be not enough people dancing at any one particular point. Maybe you have too many places for them to dance. Trying to satisfy too many people. Don't think in terms of program levels. But think in terms of the satisfaction that people attain or obtain from doing a particular activity. Maybe you don't need the square dance shop. Maybe you don't need the caller's workshop. Maybe you don't need whatever it may be. So look at eliminating. And then rearrange, reverse the order. Turn it upside down. 
What are the opposites? Reverse roles. You ever have a dance with a round dance cue called the square dances and the square dancer cued the rounds? <laughs> Oy, I don't know if I can find a round dance cue who could do that, but if you want to write up some notes, I'm sure they might be able to. Or, and these ideas are just coming to me, folks. Or, supposing you have, if, you, if you're normally a, uh, a club that dances a patter call, singing call, and a round dance in between, suppose you did two rounds with one square dance in between. Look at your audience. What do they want? Just for one night. Change it around. Reverse the order. Change the pace. How many of you on a normal club dance do a patter call and a singing call? Okay. Have you ever done a whole night of doing it backwards? Or if you're not brave enough, have you ever tried the first and last tip or first or and or last tip? Singing call first, patter call last. Or two singing calls in the first tip, two singing calls in the last tip. Or two patter calls in the first tip, two singing calls in the second tip, two patter calls. In... Look at the look at the arrangements you can come up with for variety. You're working the floor, and you say, Boy, this crowd is really not with it. I'm not sure if it's me, them, or the weather. And if you ask everybody there, they'll tell you it's the weather. Can, can't you take two of your most ruckus singing calls and then a third tip, play them both? Who said you had to have patter first followed by the singing call? Okay. Rearrange things. Okay. Let me give you a couple of examples of applying some creativity. Last Thursday night was a regular club dance. And last Thursday was April 1st. It also happens that every first Thursday of, our, of the month is a workshop. Didn't have much time to program. By the time I got home from work and got everything you know, together, I had an idea what I was going to use. And on the way there, which takes me about 15 minutes to get to, I'm lucky. I said, gosh, you know, this is April 1st, April Fool's joke. What can I do that nobody will get harmed because I thought about telling them that the club, the club had to find a different hall, that something wrong with the refreshments, you know. We, we, we had to mix decaf with tea to get enough coffee for everybody, you know, some crazy thing. I said, April, 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 A-P-R-I-L, April. All pass right in line. And Thursday night, we workshopped all pass right in line. Now, for those of you that want choreography, here's one for you. I had to write it down. I can't remember. All eight circulate. No, take that back. The ends only circulate. The center forward to a left-handed scoot back and cast left three quarters. Extend to the outside two who have just faced in and make a left-handed ocean wave. All eight circulate once, and those facing out do a U-turn back. All material that anybody in a plus program can dance. And I had worked, you know, I really set it up because I did some left-handed scoot backs before we got into it. And after we did it about three or four times, and they're dancing every other which direction, and some of them were getting it, and some of them were getting frustrated. I said, folks, you know how things are around here. Anytime we come out with a new figure, and there's a lot of words, callers want to shorten it, and they sometimes abbreviate it, like PTA. I said, this one, we're going to abbreviate, and we're also going to add one word at the end, Okay. All right, everybody ready? You all know where you're going. Think about all pass right in line. Ready? Get set. I'm going to abbreviate it for you. Go. April Fool. It took all of about five minutes to work that thing out in my head because I kind of changed a few things as I was workshopping it to make sure body flow went and everything else. Creative? Yeah. For me, for you, I don't know. Because creativity is sometimes in the eyes of the beholder. Sometimes in the eyes of the beholder. If it's new to you, and no one else has known about it, then it's creative. Because creative is new and useful associations. A nice, simple definition. New and useful associations. 
new to whom? To the creator and the recipient. Now there's a question there about the little kid playing on the beach with his sand trying to make castles and he realizes, ooh, I can't make castles unless I add water to the sand. Is that creativity? Well, you ask the folks back at the college and they would say no, no. Because everybody else knows about that already. However, if it's a whole bunch of kids and they're all trying to do the same thing and one kid makes that discovery and communicates that discovery to the other kids... Then there's an argument that says, yes, that's creativity. Because it is a new and useful, that implies an audience, association. So let your mind go crazy. It's okay to do those kinds of things. All right, let's see. Oh, you've been sitting long enough. Tell you what I'd like you to do, folks, if you would, please. Everybody, please stand. The moans and the groans. Kind of take take a look around you. Take a look around you, and find someone that you can at least make eye contact with and smile, who you really don't know. Okay, go over and introduce yourself. On the tape, they're introducing themselves. And now they're smiling and wondering what's going to happen to them. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could bring it back, please. If you could bring it back. Stay there. I'd like you to stay standing. And if you would, if you would, with a person you have just met, Please stand back to back with the person you have just met. Okay? Back to back. I would like you to change, I would like you to change three things about your appearance. Minds don't count. Three things about your appearance. Some chuckled, some didn't. I'm talking to the folks on the tape. Three things about your appearance. When you have completed that, just over your shoulder, say, okay. When you hear the other person and both of you are okay, then turn to face each other and pick out those three things. Ready? Get set. Go. Try to find what the changes are. Time's up. Okay. Now what I would like you to do, now what I would like you to do is turn back to back with each other again. Turn back to back. Change three more things. Three more things. For the folks at home listening to the tape, You can play this in front of a mirror. Think about that. Folks at home listening to the tape are going to stand in front of a mirror right now. They just change three things, turn around, look at themselves, and try to find out what three things they changed. Okay, let your partner know when it's okay. Time, time, one more thing I would like you to do. If you would, stand back to back and change three more things.
Okay, time's up. Did you find them all? Okay, that will take about 15 seconds for everybody to put their clothes back on. That makes the folks that didn't make it and bought, that aren't here and bought the tape want to come next year. Okay, now you can take your seats. It's interesting to watch that exercise. It's interesting to watch that exercise from here, especially when your partner's in the same room and they're looking over their shoulders saying, Ooh, I wonder what he's doing this time. How many felt comfortable and could find three things on the first time through? Okay, easy to change those three things. What was your reaction to the second time? A little more difficult? Okay. Had a search, dig a little deeper. You in the well, boys. Oak Ridge boys. <laughs> How about the third time? Hmm? Got three? Yeah. More difficult or easier? What? Boring? Because you got all three, you kept going and going and going? Same thing. Oh, change, change the same three things. The what? After that? But there was a point at which you had to start searching, right? Yes. Had to start searching and be a little creative. We've done this exercise with change three, change five, and change seven things. It's a little too big a group. We, you know, I get mobbed after the second time through. Research has shown that when we are looking for opportunities, challenges, ideas, solutions, the first one-third are the same thing we get all the time. The second one-third are usually the far-out, ridiculous ideas. The third one-third are the ones where the best solutions usually come from. Now, we only spent about four minutes playing that exercise. Imagine if you have a, a challenge that really needs your creative ability. It could take hours and we know of corporations educational institutions that have spent days examining one problem the hard part defining the problem the second hard part coming up with enough ideas so that we have something to select from there are two basic kinds of people gentleman from England by the name of Curtin has done a lot of work in the area. There are adapters and there are innovators. And you will rec recognize yourself very quickly. The adapter is one who likes to work within the framework that has been established. When given a challenge, they say, what are the rules? And they play by the rules. The innovator likes to go outside the system looking for answers and might even try to change the system and say ooh there's a loophole here I can do this because there's no rule covering it a good example is Christmas morning the adapter is the one usually who unwraps the gift may fold the paper up opens the box takes out the book of instructions, reads the instructions, and then begins to assemble or to operate. They like to do those things pretty much in a step-by-step -step logical pattern. The innovator opens the box, grabs the thing inside, begins to operate, put together, and when it's all got it all figured out or it doesn't work the way it's supposed to, grabs the instruction book and then reads the instruction book. 
the innovator gets bored getting dressed. Instead of putting the left leg in the pants every morning, he decides today I'm going to put the right leg in first. Instead of shaving first, I'll brush my teeth first. Looking for some excitement, some stimulation. We need adapters. We need innovators. We need adapters to keep innovators straight. We need innovators to put a little crooked line through the adapter. A nice balance. And in creative problem solving, the suprastructure of creative problem solving is maintained by a dynamic balance of divergent thinking and convergent thinking. We need to get a lot of ideas and we need to find a way to get to the good solutions. The problem with brainstorming, and that's really what we're talking about when we say diverge, when most people say help me out, I brainstorm an idea, or I, I got a problem, and let's come, see if we can come up with some ideas. What they're really saying is, give me some good ideas you think I might like to hear. And you are immediately in a box. Give me some good ideas you think I might like to hear. Rather than, give me some good ideas. And if you have ever conducted a brainstorming session or been part of a resource group in a brainstorming session and those ideas have been squelched, you immediately uh, sit back. You get cut off. Someone says, yeah, that's a good idea, but I don't think it's going to work. Well, who else got an idea? And when you start to mix generating ideas with selecting and screening ideas, that's divergent with convergent. You're going, to, you're going to stop, slow down the flow of ideas. So when you're looking for possible solutions, look for as many as you possibly can. And on another page in the handout, you'll find the dynamic balance. The dynamic balance is the key words are the first line in, in both generating options and screening and selecting. It's a balance between deferring judgment and using positive judgment. The idea was first purported by Alex Osborne in the late 1950s, so it's been around for a long time. Defer judgment if you want ideas. In the hallway during the break, somebody said, we got, I got an idea for the Public Relations Committee. Good. Tell me about it. He told me all about it, and he says, you're going to report that to the committee? I said, I don't know. I'll report it to the committee. I don't know where it's going to go from there, but that's a good idea. All ideas are good. And you accept that premise, and you get together with some folks and start talking about ways to do new things. You're going to get through the usual one-third. You work your way through the difficult ones, and then you start to come up with things that are going to be new and useful. When you're generating ideas, also strive for quantity. Again, research has shown when you have many, 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 many ideas, you'll come up with better solutions in the end. Start with four or five ideas. You ain't got much choice, folks. So get through those three stages. Get through the easy ones, the ridiculous ones, and then into the good ones. Free wheel. Let your mind go. Let it be ridiculous. Who cares if it's germane to the problem at that point? When you're working on some choreography, don't think of a square. Think of a circle. Think of a triangle. Think of a cube. Think of, instead of horizontal, think vertical. Think diagonal. What's that got to do with square dancing? I haven't the faintest idea, folks. <laughs> but it's going to get you out of the rut. And if somebody's there working with you on ideas for next year's program, and they say, let's go on a hayride. No, let's go on a boat ride. Well, there's no river around here. Look, at we're, kind of, we're cutting off that idea. Why can't you have a boat ride in the middle of Utah? I don't know. Where's the desert? Quick. Arizona. No water around. 
Who cares? I have a boat ride in the sand. That's ridiculous, right? If we had time, we'd follow that idea through, and we'd come up with one heck of a party, wouldn't we? Everybody with squirt bottles. Imagine that. Yeah, boat ride in the sand. Everybody with squirt bottles so we can stay wet. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Is this guy weird? That's divergence. That's generating ideas. Now, the adapter's the one saying, oh, geez, I don't know if we could do that or not. The innovator's the one that's now got not only that party, but seven other parties already planned in the desert. Or a desert island. Hey, let's take a cruise. Notice how they get connected, which leads to the last one. Seek combinations. As I said before, it's okay to build on somebody else's idea. That's divergence. And those who know me say, I love to diverge. Yes, I do. Convergence, when I converge, it comes real fast. I usually make the wrong decision. <laughs> I slam on convergence. I'm getting better at it. The key, the principle behind screening and selecting options is the positive judgment. How many are familiar with the process of elimination? You eliminate that one, I don't want that one, no, that's no good, that's no good, that's no good, that's no good, that's no good. You usually throw out the, 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 the worst, the best worst one in the beginning, right? When you get all done, you know what you got? The least worst of the bunch. How about looking for the best of the bunch the first time around? It doesn't mean picking out one, but saying, oh, that's a good idea. I like that solution. That's a pretty good option. Hey, I got four or five of them. Because you know what you might end up with? Four or five good solutions that you can use at various times. Not just one, but you end up with some good ones. Maybe they don't apply to this situation over here. Trying to figure out what to do with the club to improve the dance experience. Well, wait a minute. The College Association also needs to improve the dance experience. But the idea I generated over here in trying to, follow, trying, to, trying to accept the challenge for the club could be applied to the Callers Association over here. So you end up not just solving one problem, you could end up solving a whole bunch of problems. Be deliberate. Once you have decided to converge, the best thing to do is converge. So he says, well, i got another idea. Mm. Write down the piece of paper. We'll look at it later. When, you're, when you are selecting and screening, you're through generating. However, don't shut off somebody who's still generating ideas. Have them write them down someplace. And if you get a group of people, a board meeting, these post-its are great for brainstorming. Everybody writes an idea down. They post it on a wall or a flip chart or someplace. And nobody's flow of ideas is suppressed. You put it up, you read it, so everybody hears it, so they can build on it and steal your idea and make it better. And you end up with a whole wall full of post-its. Yeah, works out real nice. But when you're converging, be deliberate. We're looking for a solution. Consider the novelty. Let's do something a little different. Listen to the definition of creativity. New, 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 and useful associations. You get into the same old home drum, haphazard affair every Thursday night, unless you're looking for novelty. And stay on course. Remember what you are trying to solve. If you find that the problem is wrong, then go back and redefine the problem and start somewhat all over again. What's wrong with square dancing today? Well, how many people we got here on 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 57, 58. Give them 58 in the home office. I did that. I almost forgot to do it. You get 58 different ideas. Because we haven't defined the problem yet. It's just a question. Maybe the problem is what's right with square dancing. And the problem is we're not telling people about it. 
Those are off the top of my head. Those aren't. I, <laughs> I'm not going to stimulate discussion. Those are just examples. Okay. So when you're selecting options, make sure you stay on course. The principles that I have given you will apply to any part of the dance program. If you are an innovator, let me caution you. When you go back to your club next week, after Easter, in most cases, and you come up with all these stupendous ideas, fabulous, go slowly. What do we know about change and people that want to change? They usually don't. Take your time. Be deliberate. Stay on course. General, that's the selecting options. If your mind has been working overtime, and if you're an innovator, it probably has, you've now got a whole bunch of ideas listed or things you can do. Make that part of a two- or three-year plan. Try to put them all in next week, and you're in trouble. Okay. But put them into your idea system. And then when someone says, hey, you got an idea about it, you say, hmm, let me get back to you. And before you know it, they like your ideas. They like your ideas, so be cautious. Adapters, be open. If you're looking for creative solutions, the new, the useful, and adapters, keep the innovators in line because they'll go crazy and create chaos before they know it. Questions? Comments? One question in the back. Yes, sir. Stu? Good idea. What, for those folks at home, what Stu is suggesting is that you take Burleson's and have the dancers select a number of a figure. Give them a number from one to, what is it, up to 5,000 or put it somewhere around there. And so they give you 1,243, and then you teach them 1,243, and after they learn it later on in the evening, you don't call it by name, but you call it by number, 1,243. That reminds me of the old joke about the prisoners who used to tell a story by telling numbers, right? Yeah. You have the same problem on the dance floor? <laughs> dance by numbers? Never could dance? Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Now, it's, a, it's, it's a novelty type thing. We're not violating any principles of definition or programming if we consider it to be a novelty and we don't go to a traveling club, walk in on the first tip, go, okay, one, five, seven, three. How come you folks aren't dancing? Another question or comment? Yes, you could do that too. Teach something, give it a number, and call them throughout the evening. No, you don't have to. Right. Right, just call numbers. Dance by the numbers. A different different way of dancing by the numbers. Questions, comments? Can you do a right and left through from an ocean wave? Can you? Oh, yeah, very carefully. But how about involving the people in the other ocean wave? Oh, my goodness. Do you have couples facing each other someplace? Excluding the ocean wave, look at the folks facing in. They're on the diagonal. Normal setup. This is not legitimate. But those facing each other and can wink at each other, I'd like you to do a right and left through. Extend to each other, take right hands, pull by, go to the outside of your set, courtesy turn that person, and then walk into the open spot. Can you do that? Just came to me. I don't know. But I can tell what's going to be danced all over the country next week. <laughs> Along with all pass right in line, fool. <laughs> And if you, I'm not going to repeat the sequence for the all pass right in line, fool, because you've got to buy the tape. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Yes, sir, in the back.
One plus square and one mainstream square on the same floor. Has anybody ever danced it? Calling, alternating between them? I, I'm talking to an innovator, folks. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Okay, so you're alternating between them at the same time. Interesting. Interesting concept. Um, is, isn't there a birds of the feather session and mixing skill levels? Yeah, there's one way of doing it. Put them both out there and dance them both. Yeah, good idea. I like that. We do not, I did not intend to talk exclusively about choreography, but when it comes to creative choreography, what we have just talked about, if you apply those principles, think of every possible combination, I'm sorry, every possible starting formation and arrangement for every figure on the basic or mainstream list, and you'll keep some advanced dancers moving. Where does it take me, and where does it get me? And I will guarantee you, and if I don't, you know, if it doesn't work, you come see me in Vancouver next year, if you can find me, okay, and I'll give you 50 bucks. You take every figure on the, pla on the basic list and the mainstream list, start generating options. How many places can I do it from? Thinking formation and arrangement. And you will program a club for an entire year. Assuming they dance no more than once a week. When you start screening, that's when you start using the guidelines for handability, flow, smoothness. If it's a gimmick or a novelty that you're going to use once, then you can get away with a few things. But decide. Uh... For example, one that came to me, and I, I, I must admit, while I generally program most of my dances, there are times when I pick up the mic and I say, bow to partner, corner, all, and I don't know what's coming next. I'm a sight caller. And when you put centers in, what comes next? Cast off three quarters, right? If you had, if you had star through, be double pass, after a double pass through, put centers in. You got a line facing out is what you got. And so many times you fall into the trap of cast off three quarters. Okay. You sure can. You sure can. You got a line facing out. How many calls on the basic and mainstream list can you do with lines facing out? And if you're a new caller, you say, Well, I don't know. Let's see. Wheel and deal. Okay. Think think about what you have. You not only have a line facing out. But you have two couples facing out. Depending upon your starting formation, they may be a he, she, he, she, or she, he, she, he, or he, he, she, she, or she, she, he. Is that all of them? Nope. He, she, she, he, or she, he, he, she. <laughs> okay? There's enough information for you to program a whole evening. If you start diverging with what to do from there. Or what can you do with lines facing in? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's enough on choreography. <laughs> Good Lord. Other questions or comments? Yes, Bob. Thank you. Why? Right. That's great. Yes. For those on the tape, Bob told the story of the folks in Hollywood and how they come up with ideas, and they either generate ideas or they come up with a great idea. And they look at everything with a positive attitude. And that's a whole other workshop itself and how, may, how to maintain a positive attitude. And you go in with the philosophy that all ideas are good, all ideas are work, and you have to come up with why reasons why things work and why they will work. And that's the positive judgment positive judgment aspect. I thank you all very much for sitting through this session and hope you enjoyed it. 
you have a couple of days in which to really nurture your creative ability, please, when you get the ideas, think of your own personal application and how you can use those ideas. Again, thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch.